So for this week's video, I bring you a case about two twin sisters that went missing a few years ago in Switzerland. But before we start this video, I just want to say that if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed already, uh, what are you waiting for? If you enjoy true crime videos, please subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Saturday. And if you have a case that you want me to cover, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram and my Twitter will be linked down below. And I want to say that... I started a TikTok account uh, for true crime. So if you wanted me to follow, I'll put my username right here. So after I finish filming this video, I'm going to film for my TikTok account. I haven't started yet. But by the time you guys are watching this, I already have a few videos up there. So yeah. But now, without further ado, let's just start this video. The twin sisters, Alicia and Livia, were born on October 7th of 2004 to Irina Schepp an Italian-born Swiss lawyer, and to Matthias Schepp, a Canadian-born Swiss engineer. Matthias and Irina met in 2003. They both work for the same company, just in different departments. So they work for a multinational tobacco company. They meet in the mountains in one of those weekends organized by the company that they work for, uh, for the employees to meet each other. When Irina first saw Matthias, she found him very attractive. She described him as a handsome blonde man. He was tall, sporty, he was kind, he was thoughtful, and he made her laugh all evening. I mean, can we blame her? We all love a man who can make us laugh, right? And she also says that she was not really in love with him, but she was slightly in love. After about a year, she becomes pregnant. At first, Matthias gets scared, but then he accepts the pregnancy and they got married on July of 2004. Everything seems to go smoothly, but Irina begins to have some doubts. She feels that there's something strange in that man. In fact, the first time that she had this feeling that she had a complete stranger next to her was one day when they went to Bologna. So they run into a little boy and that boy had no shirt on. It was obvious that he was cold and he was dirty. And Irina said that she stopped and felt like crying and she started talking to him. Matthias pulled her by the arm and said, what are you doing? Let's go. And Irina said, he's a child. And Matthias replied, but why do you care? There's a million of them. Let's go. They started walking again and they were going to cinema to watch a movie and they started talking about the movie they were going to see. But Irina couldn't stop thinking about that little boy and how Matthias showed no compassion towards him. After giving birth to the twins, Irina got an infection and it was really bad. She could have died. And Matthias didn't seem to care. And Matthias showed up at visiting times with groups of friends who were complete strangers to Irina and he photographed her in the bed and kept saying to his friends, oh, this is my wife, like nothing is happening. But now that Irina looks back, she says that she should have left him then. And as time goes by, Matthias begins to reveal a disturbing personality. In domestic life, he imposes his wishes. Everything must be planned and codified by his wishes. At their house, there were yellow post-its everywhere with orders and how they should behave, like even for the most insignificant things. But Irina tries to save their marriage for the sake of their children and she convinces him to go to a couple of psychotherapy sessions. Matthias agreed after a lot of resistance, but with one condition, the therapist must be German. But after about six years of being married and a failed therapy session, uh, Irina decided to file for a divorce when the twins were five. Matthias refused, but Irina went to live in an apartment near the twins' school. Matthias also got custody for the girls and he agreed with everything that was said on court. Um, he respected everything, so he was fine with it, or at least it seemed like he was fine with it. But he, he kept trying to reconciliate it with Irina and try to convince her to not uh, fill the divorce papers. But in the summer of 2010, Irina filled for a divorce. The last email that Irina sent to Matthias was dated January 26th of 2011 and she said that the divorce papers were ready. Irina continued to let Matthias spend time with his daughters. She even allowed them to spend three weeks with their father in Caribbean over Christmas 
According to Irina, the girls loved their father and they wanted to spend as much time with him as they could. And Matthias was described as an affectionate father. It seemed like the girls were safe with him. On January 28th of 2011, six-year-old Alessia and Livia are picked up by their father. He explained to him to drop the girls back at their mom's house two days later on Sunday. On Saturday, January 29th, Matthias sends a text message to Irina asking her if it's okay if, if he drops off the girls at school on Monday instead of bringing them home on the next day. But Irina says that she would prefer that the twins came home first. And this was the last time that Irina heard from Matthias. At noon on that day, the twins are last seen with their father on St. Sulpice. And on 5 p.m. on that day, Matthias crosses the board into France. So as time goes by, uh, Irina starts to get worried because it's already Sunday. She hasn't heard from Matthias or the twins. She has no idea uh, if they're okay or not. So she decides to go to Matthias' house. And he found a will at his home addressed to his daughters, to her, and to other close family and friends. Irina immediately went to the police and they told her that she didn't have to worry um that Matthias will bring the girls home soon and boy were they wrong but Irina doesn't have time to wait she obtains a list of the most recent calls and withdrawals made by Matthias from banks and telephone companies and she even went to a pharmacy to see if he had bought some deadly drugs or sleeping pills and on Saturday on Sunday January 31st Matthias withdraw money from several cash points in Marseille and later, Irina receives a postcard from Matthias, and the postcard was from Marcel, France. And in that postcard, he said that he couldn't live without her. Then Matthias bought three ferry tickets to a French island, Corsica, and the ferry is due to arrive at the town of Propiano in the next morning. There are white witnesses that places the twins and Matthias in the ferry, but no white witnesses came forward to state if Matthias disembarked with or without the trains. On the next morning at 6 p.m., Matthias disembarked the ferry. As I said, no one knows if he disembarked with or without the twins. And at 9 p.m., he took a ferry from Bastia, the northeast of Corsica, and went to Toulon, where he arrived in the next morning around 7 a.m. On the next day, Wednesday, February 2nd, Matthias is photographed alone at a toll. On February 3rd, Matthias is seen in Naples in Italy and he kept sending more letters to his ex wife, one of which contained 8,000 euros in cash. On February 4th, Matthias committed suicide by throwing himself under a high speed train in the region of Apulia in Italy. And the girls are nowhere to be found. After his suicide, police found his car in Italy. He was a black Audi A6 with Swiss plates. Traces of one of the twins' saliva was found in the car, but unfortunately, the saliva wasn't enough to be used on toxicology tests, which would have allowed uh, authorities to know if they had been poisoned or if they had been drugged. His computer was searched and they found that he had research firearms and poison in, uh, in the days leading up to, to the kidnapping. In one of the last letters that he sent to Irina, he said that he was the last one to die in the train station, which implies that the twins had already died. And in another letter, he said that the twins rest in peace and they have not suffered. So I think this is his confession. He murdered his daughters. At the end of February, Irina obtains the kids to Matthias' apartment and she searched the whole place. She searched the room one by one, even the trash can, and she found a post-it that said delete Facebook, which means that Matthias didn't want to forget to delete his trace on the site. And she goes to the basement and she found boots belonging to Matthias and she knows that he never wore those boots but the boots were dirty but she never saw him wearing those boots however a neighbor remembers seeing him wearing those boots 
on the morning that he left with the twins. Authorities think that Matthias had a breakdown after divorcing his wife, but his actions also seem premeditated, like he planned the whole thing. He was searching for poisoning. There are two main theories. One says that Matthias killed the twins to get revenge on Irina, and another says that he took the twins to live with some family or friends abroad. I don't know if I believe the second one because he said in that letter that he killed them, like he didn't say like that, but he said that he was the last to die. So if, uh, he, if he was the last to die, that means that someone died before him. They said that the children have not suffered, they rest in peace. So, unfortunately, I think he killed them. But the truth is that their bodies were never found. But before all of this, Matthias went to a gas station with the twins. And a man that worked there, Jack Scorsini, remembers them. And this man was very precise. He says that he remember uh, Matthias pulling up. When he saw the plate on the car, he thought uh, Matthias was Italian. So he said, hey, Italian tourists on vacation. And Matthias wanted to know I'm Swiss. But after a few minutes, uh, one of the twins gets out of the car and... Uh, enters the store and she reached for a lollipop and Matthias says where well, is your sister in the car and she said yeah so take one lollipop for her too and Matthias then paid and left and Jax is not sure in which direction he went but he said that Matthias seemed very calm and relaxed in that day but yeah that's all I have for today uh, there is no more information about this case at least I could found uh, unfortunately, the twins are still missing, the bodies were never found, so there's not proof that they were they are dead, that Matthias killed them, even though uh, I think he did because of what he said on those letters. But I want to know your thoughts on this case. Do you think that Matthias killed the twins or do you think that maybe they're still alive and they're still out there? And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give this video a like so I know that you enjoyed it. And also, if you haven't subscribe to my channel already please subscribe if you enjoy two crime videos i post videos every saturday and if you have a certain case that you want me to talk about you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media my instagram and my twitter will be linked down below and as i said in the beginning of, of this video i created a tiktok account my username will be right here yeah so you guys should definitely go check that out if you want to see more two crime content i'm not sure uh how frequently i'm going to post on there so I don't want to promise anything but I'll try at least to post like two times a week or three times. Having all that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye bye!